Howdy. Hello, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Awesome. Uh, my name is Haley. Well, I guess I should change my little career hub thing there, but uh, I am part of the career hub team with Rachel. She um, will be here just momentarily. I was just missing. Okay. And so um, we'll give a brief introduction. Well, Rachel will be giving a brief introduction um, to you and a brief land acknowledgement for Goodwill. Um, and then um, the event is supposed to end at 2 p.m. But if you can stop like like 1.50, 150, 1.55, that okay. will, um, I just have like a few minutes to wrap up about Goodwill. Okay. Well, um, you know, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to be talking that long. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to open for questions and all that one. We may be done uh, before, well before okay. two o'clock. Okay, that sounds good. Um, yeah, certainly any format that you want to do, um, I can make sure um, that um, I can turn off and on um, guest or um, the people, part, the participants, speakers, um, whenever you need. So if you just want them left on the whole time and be really interactive, I can do that. Or I can just um, flip it where they don't have the option to come off mute at for a certain time, and then you can let me know, like, hey, everyone can unmute now, and we can share. So, however you see fit, I can make that happen. Okay. Hey, Rachel. You're muted, Rachel. Thank you, Alfie, for for coming again. And Haley, thank you. I. Today's just not my day for technology. Let's just say that. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, absolutely. So what's going on, Alfie? Uh, you know, just it's been a crazy busy day, but, uh, you know, and, and then I had some issues with uh, my reception at home. So I had to just um, swing to the office just to make sure that I did not fail when it came to, you know, not having a quality connection. So I'm hoping that it's okay. Is this, yeah, this oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Seems like it is, yes. Yeah, I was going really unstable, not me, the connection. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going really unstable, me, <laughs> not the connection. <laughs> oh, let's see, Mandy, are you on? Yep, she's here. And then uh, I usually just want to start, <laughs> uh, just start admitting people right at one o'clock. Okay. Uh, they come in. Um, so do you need me to, oh, let me make you a co-host. Mm. It's okay, Alfie. I just, I need to silent my two phones and all that. So I'm glad that it rang now. Yeah. I like that ring. It sounds like a cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, on the other one, I have a sonar uh, sound. Oh, oh. Oh, you know, with one of my old bosses, I had the, not the sonar sound, but I had the, the distress, the wah, wah, wah. So every time I knew it was, it was Hans. Yeah, so I, now everything is muted I, that I can think of, so. Yeah. Okay, okay, well, you're, you're. Hey, you're where's, where's your green? You know, I wore green just for today. Oh yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. So, okay, well, my green, um, Hmm. You, you, <laughs> Alfie, you are green every day for the army. You yeah. wear. <laughs> um, Rachel, do you need me to show the PowerPoint in the beginning or? Yeah, if you want to do that, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. But you're introducing Alfie and doing the land acknowledgement, right? Yep. Yep. So I'll just take my cues from you, Haley. Okay, well, you can just do the first several slides because most of it's just the intro and then the land acknowledgement. Okay. And Alfie, we'll record this. So okay. should, you, oh. should you like to get started? Absolutely. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and for those who are with us live today and for those who will be joining us as a part of our recast, I'm Rachel Turner Benson, and I am very blessed to be the Goodwill Military and Veteran Services Programs Manager, and I've been with Goodwill in this role for, nope, I'm going on my third year now, so we are 
um, just extremely excited to be part of um, our partnership uh, with the Career Hub, with the Goodwill Career Hub. And I will share a little bit if my driver, um, Haley Anderson, can uh, advance the slides. We are going to have with us today, who is already here in her festive green, um, Alvi Alfarado Ramos. She is a uh, just a fireball and uh, where it's Women's History Month and definitely wanting to talk about all of her great experiences around resiliency and, and women uh, in, in the workforce. Uh, Alfie served honorably for 22 years in the Army and retired as the Command Sergeant Major of uh, Madigan Army Medical Center um, a few years ago. And she took all that wonderful leadership experience and, and also that resiliency and that grit that she really built through that, through that very, very um, wonderful career and uh, did another round of some amazing service uh, in the Washington State Department of Veterans Affairs office. And now she has come into being the director of, of that office and we in the state of Washington cannot be any more excited or or happy to have such a wonderful advocate for our military and veterans of all service eras, spouses, families, caregivers um, in, in, uh, in this state being definitely represented, excuse me, represented and advocated for by Alfie. So uh, she's also just an extremely humble lady, but uh, we, we have so much to learn from her, um, even for folks that have gone a completely civilian pathway, because of course, all of those wonderful experiences and, and, um, and you know, her, her just, just everything that she has been able to deliver uh, both to our country and our state, th those are, are very much um, transferable. Uh, types of skills and mindsets and abilities that that would do the same, of course, in um, in the civilian sector. Okay, so next slide. We have a um, great amount of territory, as you'll see, with Goodwill of the Olympics and Rainier Region. We actually. Uh, are comprised of 15 counties that includes a little hop over the over the mountain range. You can see that we've got uh, Kittitas, Yakima County, um, and and we've got three three stores over there and work opportunity. Also, uh, of course, around the base, Joint Base Lewis McCord. That's that's one of our our biggest um, areas of of support. And then out into uh, the peninsula. And we also share the border to serve our Navy folks um, with uh, Seattle Goodwill there in that territory. And we do also have just a little spot of Clark County uh, down in the bottom where we um, serve the, the seniors through the uh, Senior Citizens um, Employment Program, the CSET program. Okay, next slide. All right. so. As we have been uh, working through our organizational quest to uh, be anti-racist and, and really on this journey of equity, diversity, and inclusion, we have added into any type of an opening of a meeting, uh, an event, uh, including our, our online events and workshops, to um, have a land, uh, land acknowledgement that we, that we read. And this one is actually one that was created for Women's History Month. And uh, I am very honored to, um, to share this with you right now. So um, let, us, uh, let us not, let us not um, waste any more time. So Native American women are murdered and sexually assaulted at rates as high as 10 times the average in certain counties in the United States. These crimes are overwhelmingly committed by individuals outside of the Native American community. And these crimes are particularly likely in remote settings where transient workers, oil workers, for example, live in temporary housing units called man camps on and near tribal lands. And with these crimes unfortunately falling between jurisdictional cracks, 
it leaves victims and their families a lot of times without recourse. So today we humbly and gratefully acknowledge we are on the traditional lands of a host of native peoples. While we honor with gratitude the land itself, this acknowledgement does not take the place of authentic relationships with indigenous communities. However, honoring the land we are upon serves as a first step to further understanding about the establishment of authentic relationships. In recognition of Women's History Month, let us also recognize and express thanksgiving for the contributions of native women within tribal societies still influencing in the present day. Seeking deeper understanding of the sacredness of native women and their ties to ancestral homelands honors interconnectedness. The importance of honoring women, kinship and familial ties, including the relationship to land and waterways viewed as life-giving forces are deserving of the highest respect. With the interrelatedness between the waterways and Mother Earth, let us recognize and seek to develop further understanding about the importance of the ties to these very lands forged by Native women, the life givers, despite centuries of dehumanization, and recognize the power of acknowledgement of the principles of matriarchal sac sacredness. Thank you for letting us be able to share. Okay, so this is kind of the, the, the house cleaning um, or the housekeeping slide since we're virtual. I don't need to point you to where the restrooms are and the drinking fountain and all that. So take care of whatever you need to on, on your own. I, I'm sure that everybody's uh, good to go there. So yes, we are, we are recording and uh, there will be a follow up with the PowerPoint um, afterward. And you out there in uh, Zoom land, your microphone is, is uh, automatically muted and it will remain for the duration of the workshop. But if you have a question, please, by all means, uh, submit it and you can do so by using the questions tab located in the sidebar. And um, Whenever Alfie uh, is ready to have you all participate, um, I can certainly take you all off mute so we can uh, have an interaction as well. Okay, perfect. The perfect. chat too is perfect. Perfect. Thank you, Haley. And I know that we've also collected some questions from uh, some other staff that that couldn't be here uh, right now, but they'll be so excited to be watching this on the on the recast and that. So, uh, without further ado, Alfie, our our friend, please take it away. Uh, thank you so much, Rachel. First of all, I would like to thank Rachel the Amazing, because that's what I call her. She is an amazing woman, her own right, somebody whom I have admired for so long, and now working with goodwill and, and giving her talents to you all uh, to ensure that not only veterans, their family members, but everybody related to this particular program uh, uh, has an opportunity of being able to partake on what she has to offer. So thank you, Rachel, and thank you, Goodwill, for the invitation to speak with you today. Uh, we are celebrating Women's History Month, and I am delighted, delighted that Goodwill is pausing to get us together to celebrate in sisterhood. And I know we have some of our brothers uh, online, so I want to also thank our allies uh, for being here and partaking on uh, this particular program too. Uh, I consider myself the product of hard work, divine providence, and being the in the right place at the right time. My journey has been long, at times challenging, but I'm going to share with you my secrets that are not so secret, because the fact is that you have it in you to succeed in some measure that will make you to feel empowered and ready to pass your wisdom and lessons uh, learned to others. You know, you don't have to aspire to be the president of the United States. You have only one every four years. Not everybody can be president or a senator, representative, or director of veterans affairs, but you aspire to do something, you reach that level, whatever that level is, and then you have an opportunity to share that story with others and serve as a mentor and as a coach. So I'm gonna share with you a bit of my story based on my cur current experiences. And I hope in some way to contribute somewhat to your journey. 
So the series of lifelong lessons coupled with the values instilled with my family, the military culture in which I spent 22 years and my 20, 28 years now in state service are the factors that have shaped me into who I am today. This means that I've been around for a while, a little long on the tooth, you know, going into my 69th year now. Uh, but I tell you, I tell people it's as punk as 69 because I feel great in good health and uh, ready for whatever comes next. I was born in Puerto Rico to two incredible human beings from somewhat dysfunctional families. They did their absolute best to be able to raise five children. And I'm the oldest of those five children. We were so poor that we had to run inside the house very softly as we could go right through the wood floor because it was eaten by termites. We had to put newspaper in between the walls because the holes that had been made in that house that was so old, uh, you know, all kinds of things could come through or the cool or the heat would go through. So it was uh, a very humble beginning. And uh, we learned that lesson of running softly when my brother went through the floor up to his waist one time. So, you know, those are the things that some, sometimes you think about, you go, wow, you know, you, you, you really come a long way when you have humble beginnings like that. My father provided the bare essentials in my family, food and shelter. My mother went to work to provide everything else. If we needed clothing, furniture, our Christmas present, anything beyond food and shelter was provided with my mom who went to work uh, when women usually did not go to work. My dad was a very humble, simple man, one who was proud of his two years in the army during the Korean War. And unknowingly, he inspired me to join as his respect for the uniform and love for his service was very, were very contagious. I will also tell you that I was a rebel and not one handful, two handfuls. While I did not disrespect my parents, I was like many teenagers who thought that they were terrible parents, ignorant, insensitive, overbearing, controlling, but it took my leaving home to understand that I had something so special in my upbringing and the way that they were, that when I go mentally to that place, it still takes my breath away. Both of them were authentic leaders by action, but not by intent. They were people who instinctively drew others towards them because of their spirit of service, their ability to develop relationships, and how they use their hearts to work through the most difficult times. They were church leaders, political activists, community organizers, labor advocates, and my role models. So at 18 years, I left Puerto Rico and joined the Army in search of purpose after losing half of my college tuition because of federal cuts. It was quite a move for a young woman who barely knew conversational English. The Sisters of St. Joseph never prepared me to deal with the green twins from Louisiana or Jeanette Bailing from New Jersey. They had heavy accents I never heard before. I didn't know I had a heavy accent at the time, but I had to learn English all over again when I got to basic training. And yet, instead of being scared, I was excited to be part of this adventure. And that was that is the piece, the first piece of advice that I have for you. Choose excitement over fear. It makes it easier to face head on what comes your way. It changes how people perceive us and quiets our internal voices that sometimes can be so destructive because we all hear those voices. We all hear the voices. They tell us that we are a fraud. How the hell did we get to where we are? How lucky we are instead of how hard we've worked. They tell us that we are inadequate or how stupid we are when we put our foot in our mouths the voices instill doubt in our competence and pull us back. And the fact is that there are people who are smarter, taller, better looking, thinner, better educated and wealthier than we are. 
But I can tell you, those people we admire for those characteristics also think that there are others who are smarter, taller, better looking, thinner, better educated and wealthier than they are. So go figure. So when the voices raise fear, push back. Because if you're doing your best, it is what it is. Choose excitement over fear to quiet those voices. So I served 22 years and was selected for, for the rank of Command Sergeant Major. For those of you who are not familiar with the military, Command Sergeant Major is the enlisted ranks. Then you have the officer ranks. The enlisted ranks go from one through nine and I became a nine, which is a Command Sergeant Major, well, at the Sergeant's Academy in 1990, at the end of my 17th year in the military. Alone to make Command Sergeant Major on the 17th year was an achievement in itself. But to be a woman during those years, become that rank was very, very rare. After years of being the first woman of just about every assignment or significant uh, responsibility I was given, I realized then that the rebel that joined the army was in many ways like my parents. Can't say no, overcommit, put myself in the shoes of others to a fault sometimes, believe in second, third, and sometimes fourth chances, and choose to believe people are good and want to do the right thing all the time until they prove otherwise. So sometimes as mortified as I get when I am running like a chicken with a head cut off or get burned or disappointed after investing a lot of emotional and professional capital on something or somebody, I feel that I would lose my soul if I change any of it. So my second piece of advice to you is be your authentic self. Authenticity is about cultivating your personality and measuring your reactions so that you do not have to have situational personas. You know, be one person in one situation and another person in another. I am not like tough at work and soft at home or humorous with some people and poker face with others or show up to work or beat one day and not the other. And I know you've seen people like that that you never know what they're going to be bringing to the office from one day to the other. I tell you, that drives me crazy. And it takes a lot less work to consistently be one person in order to have balance. We have to be authentic. And it is, if it is too hard to figure it out, seek a trusted friend who is not afraid to tell you the truth, a mentor, a coach, a counselor, or a psychiatrist to work through it but you have to be your authentic self. So I got a message from our uh, information technology department a few months ago uh, because our servers were bulging with all files and outdated messages. So after cleaning up my email boxes, I went to the address book because they gave me a hard time over the fact that I have over a thousand contacts in my, uh, in my, um, in my mailbox. And it's taken up a lot of room because I put notes and all kinds of things into my contacts and addresses. So I started going through my address book to clean it up. And I will tell you, despite the fact that it's well known that I have a very bad memory, one of the things that I did was uh, start looking at all of the names and the numbers. And aside from some people who have left their positions or passed away, there were no strangers or scan entries. I could not put a face to the name. I have years worth of work and personal relationships condensed in an address book. So I can't tell you how many times I get requests for assistance or information that I can feel, but I pretty much know who I can point to. So my third piece of advice to you is develop strong connections and associations and keep track. The professional and personal relationships we nurture will last well beyond the present time and will serve us, will serve you personally and professionally for a lifetime. 
I send message regularly with a subject line, sonar ping. You know what a sonar ping is. You know, a submarine sends a signal, comes back, and it sounds like ping. Well, this is to sound off and check in with people I have not contacted in a long time. It serves as a reminder that they are important to me and they are not forgotten. So I would tell you to, to develop your squad, you know, that grouping of people that are important to you to keep contact with, but then expand it. Expand it to make sure that if it is people that you don't contact uh, in, you know, often, that at least you have a chance to be able to say, hello, sonar ping, I'm just checking in to see how you're doing and be able to nurture and just keep those relationships alive because you never know when you're going to need them to be able to refer somebody or you yourself be able to need something uh, that they may be able to help uh, with. So again, develop strong connections and associations and keep track. Really important, it has served me very well. I'm gonna wind down with a reading recommendation for you. There is a little book written by an author called Miguel Ruiz. Uh, R-U-I-Z is the last name. Don Miguel Ruiz uh, wrote this book based on the Toltec civilization from Mexico and its, teaching, its teachings and wisdom. And uh, I think probably many of you uh, may have heard about the book, even may have read it. So this, what I'm going to tell you is not something that is going to be new to you. But I read that book probably once every couple of years to be able to remind me of his teachings. And uh, it was given to me by a woman I consider a mentor. Her name is Linda Villegas Bremer. And she used to be a woman director many years ago during, uh, during the, um, uh, oh my goodness, I just forgot the governor's um, you know, tenure, uh, but she was, one of the few women who was directors in state government and the a Latina to boot, which was something was extremely rare in the higher ranks in uh, state government. And uh, the Four Agreements is the book that I'm talking about. And she gave that to me and I still have that copy that she gave me. I gave it as a present to somebody by accident and I had to bring it back and replace it by a new one because it's that important to me that present she gave me. Uh, I tell you that I work hard to live by the teachings of this book as consistently as I can. And I can also tell you that to live by those uh, teachings is, is very hard work. And these teachings are four of them. Be impeccable with your word. Don Miguel gives an extreme example in this book and that was that of Adolf Hitler. He planted seeds. Adolf Hitler planted seeds of fear that grew strong, ultimately achieving mass destruction. Seeing the awesome power of the word, we have to understand the power that comes out of our mouths. Our word is our treasure, and we squander it when in a moment of rage or in a moment of carelessness, we use words we can't rewind or by not taking a moment when angry to hold back on an email or being in an audience to gossip. These are weapons of mass destruction. So be impeccable with your word because that is something that you sometimes can't take back. The second condition is don't take anything personally. Nothing others do is because of you but because of their own reality and issues. This means not to allow those in your personal or professional relationships to drag you down because it is not about you, it's about them. The first lady said it best in a recent speech, go high when they go low. And that was Michelle Obama and also Jill Biden, believing that that was so important Go high when they go low, because it's not about you. The third teaching is don't make assumptions. This is about seeking clarity, avoiding misunderstandings, sadness, and drama. If in doubt, 
seek to understand right then and there to avoid costly mistakes, both personal and professional. And the last one, and the most important one I really believe is always do your best. Do your best as a leader, as a follower, as a parent, member of the community and in your work. And I will tell you when you know that you have done your best, even if you make a mistake, it's going to be a lot easier to be able to live with it because you know that you could have not done any better. So I am just very honored to be among you and to have the opportunity to speak with you today. I wish you so much success, fun, and excitement in everything you do in all your endeavors, in, your, in all your endeavors. And remember that there are people who are smarter, taller, better looking, thinner, better educated and wealthy than you are. But remember that there are others who see you as smarter, taller, better looking, thinner, better educated and wealthy than they are. So go figure. So now I'm going to leave myself open for any kind of questions that you may have because I'm just absolutely delighted to be here and that to be able to contribute in some small measure uh, to your development and leadership. Now, Alfie, thank you. And thank you for uh, bringing those four agreements forward and also your, uh, your, um, your blueprint for success. So we do have a question that was submitted prior to the workshop and it's from Mike. And Mike asks, can you share a time when you uh, received mentorship and, and how, that, how that helped you and a time when you provided mentorship and how that helped you as well as um, help coach, coach your mentee into a successful situation? You know, the mentorship, I have not received like the formal definition of mentorship where I actually establish a relationship. I have had a number of mentors through action that I have seen how they uh, have developed the leadership style and have contributed to mine. And I will tell you one specifically that I worked for, uh, for and with for about two years and when I first joined the military because it's one that comes up all the time for me uh, when I work with young women and uh, some men uh, when it comes to their development and, and leadership. Uh, it is uh, Sergeant First Class Mary Stringfellow. I had changed careers when I was a medic and I became a dental assistant and then a dental hygienist. When my, I worked for my first doctor, uh, I had just been fresh out of school where um, you know, we're taught certain functions to be able to mix materials and work with the dentist. And I remember when um, that dentist, um, I messed up. I mean, just, just uh, mixed something, had some streaks and, and he didn't like it. And he turned to the patient and he said, please excuse my assistant's incompetence, but she just came out of school. You know, I could have just kind of put my tail between my legs and just, you know, not do anything about it and just kind of uh, mix the thing all over again. At that point in time, I looked at him and I just walked out of the operatorium and went to the office of my non-commissioned officer. And I told her what had happened uh, because I wasn't about to take that kind of abuse. I was lower ranking. I was you know, not in a position to be able to call him in front of that other soldier. She came out of her office flying and she said, walk with me. Went over to that place and looked at him in the eye and told him, don't you ever talk to one of my soldiers like that. She does not deserve to be treated like that. She left, I mixed the materials, he never ever again treated me like that. The strength of that woman in being able to confront the situation to protect me is something that I have never forgotten. And I will tell you still, it's still emotional to me. And we're talking 1974, 1974. 
that strength and the fact that that woman, just her presence alone, especially when all these officers would come in late to the office and she would be by the front door with her arms crossed, looking at them. And you would tell you that they would scurry through to be able to get on time uh, to the place was something that was really important to me. Long answer to the question, but the fact is that I, by observation, you get a lot of mentorship on the things that you can, you know, that should, you should do, and also on the things that you should not do. Oh, that, that's great. Mentorship by observation. That's, that's very wonderful. It looks like we have a guest with us that is one of our Goodwill alumni. Hello there, Mr. Steve Lynch. Hello, everybody. Glad to be here. Thank you. How are you? Um, I'm good. It's busy and, and tiring over here on my side these days, but uh, I can't complain. Awesome. So I, I, uh, I, I enjoyed texting back and forth with you and, and thank you for, for jumping on when your other meeting was over. Uh, can, do you have any, any questions for our wonderful Alfie? Yeah, you know, if, you know, I always take advantage when Alfie's in the room. And if this is your first time, you know, now you know why I just left my other role to come over here to, to get a little bit of this time. Um, Alfie, as always, thank you for your time. And, you know, the, the book that you cited at the end, I also have been over that book a few times and, and I love it as well. Uh, one thing that's always gotten me as a young individual emerging as a leader um, is the principle of being impeccable with your word. And when you're dealing with other folks and you have intent of what your word is based off of what you're leading with, how do you, how do you manage that when there's other individuals and their word in play in the bigger picture? How do you stay true to it? How do you keep people kind of like from the military sense, how we kept people, the belief in the system and, and what we had going on, how, what recommendations would you give uh, individuals to uh, be impeccable with their word, but also be able to control that within other opinions that also weigh into the end? Yeah. You know, and uh, being impeccable is, is not being rude, uh, you know, because that's really important. It's good to be able to measure uh, how you say things to make sure that you can get the point across without being offensive. And I know people who have no filter and uh, being impeccable with your word means uh, take all the filters off because that's not that the way that it should be. But uh, I've been in a lot of situations where uh, if you don't say something, uh, it basically gives permission for escalation of behaviors. And that can be a range of different things, whether it's abusive behavior, whether it's sexual harassment, or uh, you know, many of those things that can be so destructive uh, to all of us. Uh, impeccable with the word is sometimes uh, being able to just kind of hold back uh, especially when you're tempted to be able to exaggerate the truth or, um, you know, and that's something that sometimes people can't help. And I will tell you, um, I'm guilty of that. I've done that in the past. And then you have that guilt behind that you kind of, uh, kind of stretch things out in a way that maybe, uh, were border on dishonest, but it was not. And it's just important to be true and humble, you know, about the things that, uh, that surround you. Uh, I work with uh, a governor who is amazing, you know, and uh, to me, it's, you know, it, it's my boss, but I don't engrandize myself, you know, just because I'm a member of his cabinet and do all these things, you know, so, so part of that, uh, it, it, you know, being impeccable is also about humility and being able to recognize the fact that, uh, you know, that, that there are people who do much greater things than you do, you know, that you don't get to where you are by yourself. I mean, God knows that there are lots of people that I have to thank, to including my mother for praying every day for me, because I think I told you earlier, divine providence is part of who I am today. And I believe that there's a higher power in there that uh, allows you to be able to, you know, to be able to grow and learn and exist in a way that is successful. 
And uh, something that I didn't talk about is, you know, that power of attraction and being grateful too, you know, because gratefulness is something that is important and attracts a lot of things towards you, you know. So um, impeccability, uh, being able to be, uh, to speak with the truth whenever you can. Sometimes keep your mouth shut if you don't have something good to say and just be able to listen rather than just continue to talk. Uh, it's really important. As always, I love all of that. And uh, also thank you over the last three years, you have been a, a direct influence in all of what you just said towards me. So thank you. I love you, man. I really yeah. do. Alfie, you and I have the uh, privilege of, of being friends on social media, you know, outside of outside of work, uh, even though 24 hours a day, seven days a week, Alfie is on duty for, as she says, your Department of Veterans Affairs. Uh, <clears throat> can you share just a couple things. I, I love when you go to Puerto Rico and you visit and I see that uh, you guys play music and, and, and that. What, what are some of uh, a couple of those, those um, great hobbies and, and talents that you like to uh, tap into in your off time? Oh my goodness. Um, I love the outdoors and I really recommend it uh, to anybody even if it is just to walk outside, but uh, uh, like backpacking and uh, ha having done it this year, it's been a, you know, really a crazy year, but uh, backpacking is, uh, and, and uh, hiking is uh, one of the things that I absolutely love. Uh, I didn't, um, after I left the military because I had done so much of it that I said, I'm not going to be walking around with a pack ever in my life. Uh, but uh, my wife is amazing when it comes to having done a lot of the big trails like, you know, the PCT and others. I don't do that kind of hiking, but uh, it's just wonderful to be able to spend, you know, uh, just carrying in your pack everything you need to be able to spend a week out there somewhere. Uh, lately, we bought an RV. Now we are you know, before when uh, we used to go down the road and look at the uh, people driving the RVs, I used to go, oh, those are all, <clears throat> all people driving those RVs, clogging up traffic. Well, now we are the old people clogging up traffic <laughs> because you're not supposed to run an RV more than 60 miles an hour. You know, I didn't know that then. So uh, those things are really good. And then once you get to a place, a destination, we choose a place that is going to be for hiking on the beach or hiking in the mountains. And that has been an, an amazing thing. And very, we, you know, it's very reparative, very renewing to be able to commute with and appreciate nature. Oh, that's that's great. I, I, I will make sure that uh, before, we pass an RV and, you know, um, mean mug anybody that it's, it's, it's not Alfie and your spouse by any <laughs> means. So that's, that's awesome. That is. And our, our Steve Lynch, I'm sure that uh, he'll, he'll take you fishing. Well, I mean, if we can get, yeah, fishing is something I love to do, but uh, that that's become tricky these, these days as well. Yeah. 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 Plus, I'm a vegetarian, so fishing, uh, it's a little bit out of the, <laughs> out of my realm. Okay. <laughs> we can, we can catch and release. That, yeah, they're catch and release right there. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's funny when you bring that up. Um, when Steve would plan all of our events at American Lake, and we cannot wait until we get back to our, um, our in-person, our big in-person networking events on on, uh, on post and, and working with our military and, and veterans there. But we always made sure that we had the, um, the, the veggie egg rolls and those, those became Alfie's egg rolls. So uh, whenever I'd look over that banquet order, you, Steve would you know be very, Ensure. very sure that we had Alfie's egg rolls on there, yes. So, you know, these, the, all these wonderful little nuances of, of, um, of being in your, uh, you know, just in, in your presence and part of your network, which I mean, we're both so grateful. And I know Goodwill, we've, we've always been just extremely excited, excited that uh, you've been able to, 
to be part of um, to be part of the team. So well, you know, go ahead. Yeah, and, no, and and uh, the one thing about goodwill before really uh, getting uh, with Rachel and uh, previous to her, some of the leadership is that people don't know uh, the reach and the uh, depth and breadth of goodwill. And uh, this is something that I was talking with Rachel uh, earlier. And, uh, you know, one thing to be able to have some kind of a partnership uh, for outreach, not only for us to be able to work with goodwill and, uh, and be able to take the word out to the veterans community on the things that we have to offer, but for us to be able to go out to our community and sing the praises of the amazing work that Goodwill is doing to be able to improve the quality of life of our communities. And uh, most people think it's just the stores and they are so, you know, they're so wrong, but they don't know that they're wrong. And I think we can do so much more for them to understand uh, what both our organizations have to offer. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. And thank you for that. And we are, we are, we're very blessed to have a, a wonderful retail presence in, in uh, the area, as well as a real um, uh, robust and, and we're, we're quite fortunate on our workforce development side that we have some pretty amazing programs. And just like our, our career hub, that's been a new, it, it's been a new venture to streamline um, someone who's entering into Goodwill looking for either services or training or, or just curious about what, what they may be able to do. Um, and, and, that's, and that's why we've uh, started these workshops. Yeah. And it's been Haley and uh, Mandy Tobin down there, uh, part, of, part of that team that have really been uh, really, really instrumental in getting these, these set up. So we're down to our last 12 minutes. And Alfie, I would love to give you uh, any, any chance for closing remarks and if anybody has any other questions and then we'll turn it over to Haley and she can, she can send us home then after, after uh, this most amazing masterclass, yeah. lifetime masterclass with, uh, with Alfie. Well, I just want to say thank you. Thank you uh, for giving me this opportunity. And uh, as you know, um, and I mentioned earlier, it is hard for me to say no to my own peril sometimes, uh, but if I can be of assistance and you need me to uh, join you for anything, all you have to do is ask. And if my schedule allows, especially, especially for goodwill, uh, or, you know, I, I'm available to you. And then again, nobody can say no to Rachel, you know, so <laughs> what can I say? I can show you how. Yeah, when, when Rachel, uh, what do you say? When Rachel calls, I hold. Oh. You know, so so uh, thank you for the invitation and thank you for being a friend and everyone uh, here that is listening. Uh, Goodwill rocks and Rachel rocks. Oh, you're so sweet, Alfie. Uh, you know, you put your arm around me when I was a little community support coordinator almost 15 years ago, my first my first civilian gig for, for the military. And, uh, it, 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 it means a lot. And so just, um, such a valuable lesson that we can Im impact others. And like you said, you know, definitely that mentorship by observation. So thanks again, Alfie. Uh, we've got some things that we're, I know looking at that are still kind of behind the scenes for some partnership, but uh, if we can get that lift, it, it is, it's going to help our communities overall for sure. Yes. So thank you again to our folks who uh, have um, joined us. And I know that uh, we will be very popular with this, with a, with a recast of this once we submit the recording. So, oh, Mandy Topin raised her hand. Yes, um, Alfie, I am also Goodwill employee, but also a military spouse and had, had, have had uh, been in your presence before. And just when you walk in a room, you, you just, everybody pauses. You just have that great presence. Um, on your difficult days, you know, I know everybody has some. What are some things that keeps that strength in you um, when you're going through, your, through difficult things? 
I will say, I will say thank you. Even in the hard days, I just say, you know, thank you for today. Uh, and we have a blessing uh, when we sit for dinner at home and it's thank you for yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And may all our days be long and good upon the earth. You know, gratefulness, even in the hardest time, you know, feeling grateful for anything that comes our way is one way of being able to just take a deep breath and appreciate the good things and just let go, let go of the old ones, you know, of the bad ones. Because uh, otherwise we just dwell on the bad things and forget that there's so much good that is happening to us. And that's how I usually deal when, when I have a really bad day, just take, you know, a few deep breaths to be able to just relax and get that air, you know, going, you know, that oxygen into the brain and just be able to move on. Because as I told you before, when you do the best you can, you know, and I try to do that every single day, you know, it is what it is. You've done your best. Thank you. And by the way, I'm 5'1", okay? 5'1". So thank you for the issue of presence because usually little people, you know, people kind of look at the top of your head and they go, who is that? Small but mighty. So another small but small statured but mighty Goodwill employee, Haley, you ready to, you ready to, to dismiss this? dismiss this time yes we just have a few uh little updates about goodwill so you know what's going on let me go ahead and share my screen all right can you all see the digital work opportunity center yes perfect thank you um so as we have been going through covid goodwill has transitioned to all online services um, which we are now calling our Digital Work Opportunity Center. Um, so with that, um, we have a few programs that were previous to COVID. Uh, so our Financial Opportunity Center, our Military and Veteran Services Program, uh, Disability Services, Ticket to Work and Work First, which also fall under Disability Services Program, our Economic Security for All. So if you um, live within any of those zip codes, you might be um, able to get those extra services that um, what we refer to as ESCA provides. So if you have any questions on that, please let us know. And then also our Senior Community Service and Employment Program. Um, for those in our older community looking for some part-time work and some extra experience. And then for our vocational program, we have our career readiness um, education, which does some basic um, computer skills, some work um, readiness skills to go over your resume um, and to learn some basic computer skills um, of Outlook and Microsoft and everything under that. Microsoft Azure, which is a certification through Microsoft. There is four different certifications you can gain under that, which is more of cloud computing and the back end of um, Microsoft. And then we have the Environmental Protection Agency. So we will have a um, class in April for that, a two week long course um, where you will get several certifications under Haswhopper, Forklift um, and a few others. And then we have um, GED testing um, program for our youth, which is focused on 16 to 24, the ages. So if you have not already been registered for Goodwill or DWOC, um, there's a couple different ways to do so. The first one is you can text DWOC register to 56512. Or you can go to Goodwill's website and you can find the Digital Work Opportunity Center page and there you can also sign up. Um, so after that, then you would have a job coach, which is myself or potentially Mandy Tobin or Diana, who's on this call, reach out to you um, and figure out how we can best support you on your journey to Goodwill. We also have weekly sessions on Monday at 2 p.m. that you can sign up for. Um, so if anyone needs afterwards, I can send you the link for that, or you can certainly reach out to Career Hub at our email at careerhub at goodwillwa.org for any further questions or if you want to register for anything, um, any other follow-up, uh, that would be the place to go. 
So with our Career Hub, we also send out a weekly newsletter on Mondays that goes out. So that's anywhere from talking about opportunities like this, where Alfie's presenting, um, our monthly workshops. We are hosting two workshops per month that are um, each month has a theme. So this month was focused on National Women's Month and resiliency. And the next month will be focused on small business and entrepreneurship. And or I'm sorry, volunteerism. Volunteerism will be in April, and then um, May will be entrepreneurship and small business owners. Um, so uh, you can subscribe to our newsletter, so you'll receive that every Monday, and it also includes some job offerings within the local community um, and any other program events that are happening. Uh, that is the best way to get new updates. And just a little bit more, so on the Career Hub uh, for our monthly workshops, they're going to be on the first and third Wednesdays at 1 p.m. every month. And it will, once again, as I mentioned, uh, have a theme within the month. So we will have workshops that will be a little bit more interactive and more guest speakers to come. So we really hope that you can attend and pre-register for any of those things. Um, and if you have any other questions, uh, this is our last slide. So thank you all for attending. and. Feel free to um, ask any questions out loud or in the chat, and I can do my best to answer them. So Vanra did say, thank you, Vanra, for, for, um, for being with us today. Did you know there was a fifth agreement and it is be skeptical, but learn to listen. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Thanks, Vanra. And Shayla, do you guys have any questions that I can answer? Or um, I didn't know how your involvement was going with Goodwill. Anything I can answer? Um. So I've been with Goodwill since uh, I was 24 and I'm 30 now. Um, well, I was with them for two years of, when I was 24. Anyways, uh, I was getting my GED and um, you guys are amazing. And I, that's why I wanted to get involved and I'm so glad to be a part of it again. And I wanna say thank you um, to our speaker. Sorry, I'm really bad with the names. Alfie? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, that was great. I wrote, I made a lot of notes, you know, to take with me, um, throughout my days. Cause you know, it's hard some days, but, um, yeah, thank you guys for this and let us be a part of it. Awesome. And then I had a question about the, I think, so he's trying to get into, um, getting his business license. Uh, mm -hmm. and, um, you said something about the pre-register for the career hub. Uh, mm -hmm. So he would have to like, how do I do that? Cause I, every time I go on the website it's so different now. So I'm like, oh my gosh. Yes, we are having rapid changes. <laughs> so you'll have to forgive us on that. Um, let me find the link unless Mandy, if you happen to have it handy, um, let me find the link for you. I'll look for it as well. Okay, we'll see whoever beats each other to it, but I will put in the, um, Mandy or I will put in the direct link so you can register for um, DWOC and then you can have a call. Um, there is four um, coordinator or career hub case manager people. <laughs> uh, that would be Mandy, Diana, myself, and then Sheila, who is not on this call. So um, depending on oh. which, yeah. Oh, I was just saying, Sheila is the first one I talked to, to okay, perfect. I got back involved with. Yeah, she's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, so we can make sure you get involved. And um, I'm just trying to look for it here and uh, answer any other questions you might have or get you into a program if that's of interest for you. Let's see. Yeah, I just saw um, one thing, like, um, is it that we have to pay for this workshop? No. As no, nope. okay. all of Goodwill services are free to the community. Okay, yeah, because I remember that being like for that back in the day for me, but I just saw there was like something like 25,000 or which is it? I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, no, all our services are free to the community. Um, so if you didn't know, I've 
I might be slightly off on the percentage, but, and Rachel, correct me if I'm wrong, but 95% uh, of the proceeds that come from the retail stores go into funding our programs. And so that's how all of our services to the public are free. Okay, so we don't have to pay anything. No, right. no, it's, it's definitely a large percentage. And, and then also through the, through the massive gen generosity of our community, uh, like we, we receive a lot of support from Boeing, from the Walmart Foundation, uh, from the Stromberg um, family with our mentorship. I, we have so many wonderful uh, community partners that have stepped forward in, in uh, all of our workforce programs. Um, aside from uh, the, the government contracts that we also have for some of our programming, and that, that does, it keeps our services uh, open and available uh, without cost for, for our communities in those 15 right. counties in that real big footprint. So, yeah, I, I really like, I, it was awesome being a part of it back in the day. I, I mean, I was able to bring my uh, six year old now, you know, with me to class, and it was just, so everybody was so humble and people are always learning. And I just, I told him about it. I was like, you have no idea. This is like an amazing program. So awesome. But I just saw the price on there and I was like, oh no, maybe they changed. I don't, I don't know what's going on. So. No, no, everything's still free. And I just put the website in there to go to DWOCT, uh, which all, or the Digital Work Opportunity Center. Um, so it shows like a different couple ways to do from the link that I sent. Okay, and then with that number, I mean, what? why was that on the contract? What was that on there for? Which number or what was the contract? I'm just not fully understanding. You mean the, the funding. next to DWOC number? No, it was like the 25. Yeah, the 2500 was like. Sorry, that's normally the basic cost of the training programs. So that's just the cost that it would normally cost you to go out and if you weren't connected with us. So that's just the cost of it, but it's not a cost to you. Oh, meaning they're just showing you the assumed value. If you didn't go through Goodwill, that's what you could expect to pay somebody else, like a community yeah. college or something like that. That's what the value of the training is. Right, Pretty. I'm trying to, I have one test left for um, my GED and I'm gonna go into the sonographic uh, program. But because of you guys, I have four tests done, so. Congrats. Thank you. Awesome. Well, um, unless you have any other questions, I think we can end it for the day. And thank you all for joining us. And Alfie, you had some very great words of wisdom. So I thank you for sharing that. And if Rachel has anything else to end us. No, thank you for that. It's great to have Shayla and her family with us again. And uh, we'll, we'll put this on recast. and. And again, we, we just cannot uh, thank you enough, Alfie. And every time we're, we're with you, we learn and we grow. And, and uh, that's, that's very, very appreciated. Um, so your time is very valuable. And we, we appreciate you so much. So thank, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye.